Hello, my name is Brett Davies. In this video, we're going to train, have a training video to show you how to build wills on our website, our law firm's website. So here we are. Now I could press any of those buttons, but I'm actually going to go to estate planning and wills. And I have a lot of different choices, powers of attorneys, but today we're going to just build some wills. The last will and testament. Now, there's two types of wills. There is a single will or a mutual will. If you are leaving everything to each other, your spouse, and then you're leaving everything to a whole group of people, then you use mutual wills. If you're a single person and you're leaving 25% to your girlfriend and 75% to your mum and dad, you'd build single wills. So let's go through that again. Mutual wills are for people that are leaving everything to each other. Dad leaves everything to mum, mum leaves everything to dad. If you're not doing that, your only choice is to do two single wills. So we're going to start with mutual wills. Now the next choice is I can either do no tax planning or I can have full three generational testamentary trusts. Well, why would I want to pay that extra money? Well, if you're worth over a million Australian dollars, then it's highly advantageous to do three generational testamentary trust. It's adv advantageous to estate planning, and I would opt to pay the extra money to have proper estate planning. So I'm going to have, I'm a, I'm a happily married man, I've got a, I've got a kid, I'm going to press this, the tax effective three generational test, but you trust will. And here we are. So there's lots of different, lots of different information there about, about it. That's all great. I can see a sample of the document here. Also, the questions are being asked. They're excellent to read, but I'm now going to go to build now. So we're building a mutual mutual wills. Now I'm already a member, so I'm going to just log in. So I've now logged in and I'm going to press mutual wills and tax effective. Because I've done a lot of other documents over the years, I can actually pick up any client details and have that information put into this these mutual wills. But in this instance, I'm just going to press mutual wills, a brand new one. But if you've done, if you're an accountant, you've done a lot of work for this client, you've maybe done powers of attorneys or lease agreements or things, you can actually just pick up the data and put it in here. So let's fill in the name of the first person. So let's make that the husband. And his name is Donald J. Robinson, and his date of birth is in 1977 on the 15th, and the address. Now this needs to be a residential address. And he lives at 40, 492 Jones Street in Ultimo in New South Wales. Now that's, if you, that's the information for the first person. I'm going to put the spouse in in a minute, but there's also lots of hints here. Oh, well, look at this, to the tax man I leave. Now here's a training video about the tax implications and why you should use the testament you trust. And I can watch those training videos, I can read all of those hints. There's lots of them and lots of training videos. I'm going to now press next. Now if I press next and it doesn't work, it means that I've still got data or information that needs to go in. But there's a tick. Look, I've got a tick. So I put everything I need in for myself. Now this is my darling wife, but it could be my gay partner or my mistress, or it could be my de facto. And her name is so here's my beautiful wife, Mavis Jo Robinson, her date of birth and her address. She lives in the same house I'm in. And lots of other hints here. If you're not married, it helps you, guide you through those questions. I'm now going to press next. As soon as I press next, the document is saved. Now, I don't have any alias names. So for me, I, I just all my assets are in my name, Donald J. Robinson. But my wife, in her, in her, uh, before she got married, did have some property. So I'm going to put her name in Mavis Davies. So she does have some assets there. So she has that alias name, and I press next. And another green tick. I'm doing well so far. Now the backup executors. This is where you and your spouse have both died. So everything goes to each other. So if I die, my spouse is my executor and gets everything. But if your spouse dies first, 
then he or she makes you the executor and you get everything. So they're mutual wills, all to mum, all to dad. But what happens when both of you have died? Well, the next thing, if you're giving everything to the children, is you appoint your children as the executors. But hang on, my children are only 18 months old. Still appoint them as your executors. They're likely to be 80, 60 years of age when you die. And if they are young, maybe the age majority you might want to have 18. Or maybe the age majority you might want to have 21. Now, in my case, my father says you don't reach maturity until you're 50, so he would probably put 50. Yeah. Good on you, Dad. Now, the backup executives will be the children. So if you've got two children, they might only be 18 months old, but you put the names of the two children in. So my first child is Franklin Robinson, and the age majority for him is 18, and he also lives with me. And I'm now going to press add another backup executor. So I'm going to put my second child in now. And my second daughter, or my second child rather, is Mary May Robinson. But she's a bit of a spendthrift. So, now I wouldn't normally do this, but just for the sake of this argument, I'm going to actually change her age majority to 35 years of age, which means while my boy gets his bit, his half of the assets at 18, my daughter will need to wait till she's 35 years of age. In the meantime, she can still be drip fed some money for toilet paper, for living expenses, be given to her school, if she's a private school or car to get to university with, or even a money to, for a wedding. But she just can't use all the money, she just can't grab all the money until she's 35. And who are the people that looks after it? Well, it's her brother, herself, and two additional people. So because my children are still young, they're only 18 months old, I'm going to add a third and fourth executor. And they will be, I'll probably pick my uh, a brother from my side of the family and maybe a brother from my wife's side of the family. So my brother is Gino Caluti, and I'll leave the age majority to 18, obviously, for him. He's well above that anyway. And he lives in South Australia. It's not a problem. So I might, I might live in, in, in New South Wales. He lives in South Australia. That's fine for an executor. But I'd also like to have a fourth executor from my wife's side, so I'm going to appoint her brother now. So my fourth executor is Brian Davies. I've left the age majority. He's, he's a, an uncle of my children. And there he lives in Brisbane, which is fine as well. So I now have four executors. I have my two children. They're only a few months old. I then have an uncle, from my, well, my brother, and my wife's brother. So four executors there. Now, obviously, as my children reach the age of... of um, 35 or 18, we don't need to have the brothers involved, in which case they will just renounce. They could well have died as well. So, But we're trying to draft a will for you, which you never, ever need to update ever again. So we've now got the four executors. I'm very happy with that. Let's now move on to the next question. The executors carry out your wishes in the will, and if you've got five children, appoint all five children as your executors. If the children all hate each other and cannot work together, still appoint them all executors. So if your children are all over 18, appoint them all executors. Because if you hate one of them, leave them out. <laughs> Just joking. Put all children as, as executors. If they don't work together, that's fine. The role of executor is one of servant to the beneficiaries. So they're beneficiaries anyway. You might as well make them executors. I'm now looking at the, the general age of majority and... In this instance, I'm going to leave it at 18, but if you want every single beneficiary, like your, um, let's say one of your children dies, automatically their children pick up what they would have got, you may want to dial that to, say, 23. But in my case, I'm just happy with 18. I press Next, and if the button goes green, it's saved automatically onto, your, onto our server, our law firm server, and you can come back to this document any time and pick up where you left off. I hate Pacific Gifts. They're a disaster. You don't know what assets you'll have when you die. There's lots of hints to say, please say no to this question, and we're going to do that. I'm going to go straight to residuary beneficiaries. So what have we got here? We've got mum leaving everything to dad, and, mum leave, and dad leaving everything to mum. We've got that already. But now, this is when mo both mum and dad have died. We've got the executors, but they're not the people getting the assets, necessarily. They're the people that carry out the wishes in your will. They can also be beneficiaries. 
but we need the residuary beneficiaries. And in that case, it's my two children. After my wife and myself die, everything's going to my two children. So I'm going to put them in right now. So my first son was, my first child was Franklin Robinson, and he's getting 50%. So both my wife and I have died, and I've got 50%. At what age? I'm happy with 18. Now the questions regarding age majority were just for the role of the executors, so they can be executors. I would always make the children executors at 18, even if they're not getting anything to the 21. It's still good for them to get used to looking after the money. So there it is. I've got my first child in, but I need to have my second child, my little girl. And I'm going to put her in. And she, of course, will get the other 5%. Sorry, the other 50%. Now, if I had three children, I'd be giving them 33 and a third percent each. That's how you do that. But in my case, I've got two children, it's 50%. At what age? I've made it 35 for her because she's a bit of a spendthrift. Now that's it. They're my two beneficiaries. My wife and I have those two beneficiaries. Now because we travel with the children, we can add a disaster clause. So we would give half to her, I'd give half my assets to my side of the family and my, I'd give the other half to my wife's side of the family. But you only use disaster clause if you're travelling with your children and all of you can be killed in a car accident or the aeroplane together. In this case, I'm not going to worry about that, so I'm just going to go to next. Now, contemplation of marriage is not relevant to me because I'm, I'm married. But let's say I was living in a de facto relationship and therefore I am not married at the moment. I've been with the same young lady or my same um, same-sex partner for the last 20 years, but I'm not married. But... If I get married, I'll invalidate my will, and because marriage revokes a will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the will in contemplation of marriage to my 20-year-old de facto partner. I've been with her for 20 years. I'm unlikely to marry her, but I'm still going to put her in that I, that I could marry her, in which case, if I do, so I press yes there, and I put my wife's name in there, then if I do actually, well, sorry, my de facto in there, then, and I do get married to her at a later point, it does not invalidate my will. That's pretty straightforward. Most people just press no because they're already married. But in a de facto relationship, I would suggest you press yes. Now, it doesn't mean that you're going to get married. It just means if you do get married, your will remains valid. It doesn't mean you have to get married. And if you don't get married, your will's valid. If you do get married, your will is still valid. Well, let's go to the next then. Contemplation of divorce. Let's say that I've been living with my de facto for the last 20 years, but I never got divorced from my first wife. Now, under most jurisdictions, if I get divorced, it invalidates the will. So let's now say I make my will, to, and I leave everything to my de facto, but then my old wife from 20 years ago, I haven't heard of her for a long time, rings up and says, oh, I want a divorce. I let her have a divorce, or she gets a divorce, whether I like it or not. My will's now invalid. So if there's someone I may get divorced, then I'd press yes and I put down my old wife from 20 years ago that I haven't spoken to. Now we come to guardians. I think it's vital if you have children under 16 years of age, then I think you should take up the opportunity of putting in a guardianship clause. And there's lots of hints here, and it's a very important question. So read those hints and watch the training videos. In this case, I'm going to put in the two uncles. Because I've got 18-month-old children, I'm going to put the two uncles in. And it's okay to put in my uncle, the children's uncle from one side of the family and my wife's, my wife's brother from the other side of the family. That's because they may not have the custody of the children, but they have guardianship. So they look after the general issues of religion, which country the children live in, why it might be someone else that has custody. They work out what colour socks the child will wear that day. But I want to take up, my wife and I want to take up the opportunity of having guardians and we're going to I'll put them in now. In fact, I've spoken to my wife, and she wants to have just her brother as the guardian. I'm happy with that. So let's put, let's put him in. Now, 
and he's just moved to Western Australia. So there we go, he's, he's his address there. I can, I can add another guardian. In this instance, my wife just wants to have one. I'm happy with that. Obviously, guardianship clause have no benefit until both my wife and myself are dead. If I was to die, then my wife would just continue to have custody of, of her own child. Now, who can challenge a will? Well, people that can challenge a will are your parents, people you sleep with, like your mistress, your wife, your husband, your gay partner, and, and de facto's. Your children, children you adopt, and stepchildren that you're maintaining. And the fourth group are your grandchildren, but generally only if the parent's dead or you're maintaining that grandchildren. There are a few other bits and pieces there that can be added on, but that's most in most states. Now, if I'm worried, I'd press yes, and I would put in the name of the person that might challenge, like my father. If he's living at home, I don't want him to challenge, so I'd, I'd put his name down. So I will do that. Kenneth Edward. Now, it's unusual to have put considered person clause in the will, and it'd be very unusual in my will because I'm doing what, in this will, what society deems to be normal. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's actually what I've done in my own will. I've left everything to my wife, she's left everything to me, then we've left everything to our children. That sort of will is really tough and really difficult to challenge. It costs about $100,000 to challenge a will and about $100,000 for the estate to, to, uh, to stop the challenge. So it's about $200,000 to challenge a will and very rarely would you ever put a considered person clause in, but I've decided to put my father in. There he is. Now, my father can't challenge my wife's will, so I, I don't need to put anything in my wife's will. Let's go next. As soon as I press next, it's now saved. You can come back to it in years to come. Wow, we've almost finished. Now, many accountants, financial advisors and lawyers use a website, and they might create hundreds of different wills, so they might want to put their client reference number in. They may also want that reference on every single page. They may also want their, their logo of their accounting house on the front page of some of the documents. Done it. So I've now finished everything, but our website is going to give you another chance to have a look on the summary page of everything that we've done, just to check, because we can always go back and change anything. We haven't locked, them, not, we haven't locked it down yet. So that's maybe this is correct. Yes, spelling's correct. Happy with that. Oh, I want to just check on something with my wife. So I might just and not go any further at the moment and come speak to her tonight and then perhaps go in tomorrow and lock and build. But I'm happy with that. Guardians, Brian, excellent. Look at that, fantastic. So the button lock and build is there. Now if I can see the lock and build button, it means I've got green ticks on everything. See, our law firm carries millions of dollars of professional demi insurance on this on every single document we sell. We want to make sure everything's correct. So the green ticks are excellent. So let's press lock and build. Now at this point, we cannot change the document. And I'm going to put my credit card details in. I put my credit card details in. Within a few seconds, the document's now ready to be opened and have a look at. Now remember that every single one of our documents is 100% money back guaranteed. You can turn any of the documents anytime for a full refund. Now, there it is there. Mutual wills. Let's see what I have built for myself. I'm very excited to see what I've got here. Now, if I had put the accountant's logo, that's where it would have gone there. And I opted to put that logo in. And this is the last will. Three generational testament you trust. Beautiful, good estate planning. Previous wills are revoked. Good. There's my four executors. Well done. That looks good. Age majority is 18. General beneficiaries, lots of testament to trust, lots of tax saving mechanisms there. Some suggestions to get legal advice, excellent. And there it is. So let's just see. I want to make sure everything should go to my wife first. So let's see, where's that? Where does it say that? Looking down, there's definition sections. And there it says. If my spouse, Mavis, survives for 28 days, then to give everything to her. Good. But if Mavis has not survived for 28 days, then to give everything to my two children. There's Franklin and Mary. And Mary's at, 30, at 35 years of age. That looks great. Now, Clause 5 says that if any of my children die before me, what they would have got will go to them. So let's have, if Franklin's got three children, 
it was, it was only 18 months old a few months of, at the moment, but the time moves on. He's now got three children and he dies in a car accident. Then whatever Franklin would have got will now go to Franklin's children, your grandchildren. At what age? At age 18. That's fine. What if the children, what if the car rolls over and Franklin's three children die? Then everything now goes to Mary at the age of 35. And if Mary dies, then whatever she would have got will go to her children at 18 years of age, because the age of majority is 18 for everyone other than Mary, it's 35. There's a protective trust in there, so if the children go bankrupt, they, they don't lose anything from insolvency. If the children are under 35, they can still have money used, which in case the daughter, for education, advancement, support, benefit of, of, young, of that young daughter, of any of the beneficiaries that haven't reached the age of majority. Lots of executors' powers to reduce tax, a very tax-driven document. There's a superannuation testamentary trust, that's the washout, the 17 or 32% non-dependency tax. There's my considered person clause to my father. There's the guardianship clause to Brian, and there's a signing clause. Next, next is my wife's will, and she's got what she wanted in her will, everything to each other, then everything to the children equally, but she doesn't have the considered person clause, but she has the guardianship clause. Wow, that's great. And there's the way she signs it. Now, here's the covering letter on our law firm's letterhead, addressed to our clients, confirming how to sign the wills. And you can ring us up and telephone us anytime for any help. Also, different information about the superannuation. There's other things we'd like you to consider doing which don't relate to the will. So that is your last will and testament for a three-generation testament you trust. There are four different types of wills. You can do a single will with, with, with estate planning, a single will that's simple, or you can do mutual wills, it's mum to dad, dad to mum, simple, or you can do mum to dad, mutual wills which have estate planning, which is the one we've just built. If you're in doubt, telephone us. We'll be happy to give you as much free legal advice as you need to build your wills. Enjoy.